All right, ladies and gentlemen, today it's all about commercial real estate. You're going to meet the man, one of the top producers in the state of Texas, coming up next right here on Cliff's Notes. Real estate agents, are you struggling with the day-to-day grind, dialing for dollars, putting in hours of floor time with little to show for it? Are you looking for tips, tricks, and tactics to accelerate your career as an agent that will have you closing more homes, working with more clients, and earning more money than ever before? Hi, my name's Cliff Freeman, and I've spent the past two decades of my real estate career running one of the top brokerages in DFW and personally coaching over a thousand high-performing real estate professionals across North America. I created this podcast to share the strategies and tactics you need to explode your real estate business. I guarantee it. Yes, I guarantee it. And today, I am really guaranteeing it because we have a superstar on the show today down at the end of the table down there. I want you all to meet Mr. Robert Creamer. And uh, Robert is a uh, commercial hotshot. I mean, you are like, uh, you know, when you when the Hall of Famer list is passed out, you're <laughs> going to be at the top of that, Robert. But uh, welcome to the show today. We're excited to have you. We had a lot to cover. And uh, we're going to drop... Uh, uh, volumes of nuggets uh, on our audience today, and I'm excited to share. You're the first commercial guy we've had on the show, by the way. Well, I appreciate so. it. Thanks so much for the invitation, and yeah. I'm glad to be here. Let's rock and roll. That's rock and roll. Before we start rocking and rolling, though, we always got to check in with the man himself, Trelvis Giles. How you doing, Trelvis? I'm good. I'm good. How about you guys? I'm doing great. Always you got the any... highlight of my day to see y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you don't know what a highlight is until we get we get a chance to spend this this afternoon with you. It's <laughs> it's always a pleasure. But I do have to ask you a question. This uh-huh. is a serious question. Okay. Serious question. A serious voice. A lot of us have been on the knees on our knees mm. after the hockey game last night. Okay. And we want to get you to pull your crystal ball out. Okay. And give us your prediction on who's going to win the Stanley Cup. Okay, so my prediction is the Stars will win in seven games. And I'm, I'm, I'm putting this good energy in the air right now. Next game, the Stars will win 3-1. I'm claiming it right now. You're claiming it. Mm. I'm claiming it right now. And They'll you're saying 3-1. it's only going to take seven, not eight games. <laughs> seven games. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hope not eight. <laughs> <laughs> could be a first. It could be. Could be a first. Could be a never first. Know. Well, I hope you're right. <laughs> Put that good energy out there, man. All right, man. I feel the love. I feel the. Do you feel the green energy? It's the stars. Loving the stars, right here. I thought that was the smell of money. The smell of oh, money. Oh. oh yes, we'll talk about making it rain on the next show. No, that's <laughs> that's not that what I'm talking about. Anyway, welcome to Lincoln Center. Uh, we're here. This is not New York City. I know it looks a lot like it, but we are here in North Dallas and excited to be with you guys today, Robert. Um, Let's just get down and, and dive in here. I want you to unpack some things for us. You know, we were I was talking to C3 um, in the green room uh, yeah. while you were out for a second, and I thought one of the first questions that would be really cool to start with would be to, to ask you this. You know, I've, I've interviewed and met a lot of, of real estate agents, people who want to get in the business, and there's always that question about, well, I don't know if I want to go into residential or commercial. And I try to explain to him it's two different worlds, right? Yeah. It's completely, you can't be in, in, in the, well, oh, I want to do both. Well, okay, you can't be a master of both of them and be You can be best. good, you can't be great. You can't be great, right? Because And don't let good get in the way of great. So what do you, how do you advise somebody? If I was a, a said, Robert, I'm thinking about getting my real estate license. I don't know if I want to go commercial or residential. How, how would you respond to that? Well, I think it's okay if initially you educate yourself on both, try a little bit or shadow in either direction to see which one you think you're gonna fit better in, where your personality lies, and what you're a little bit more passionate about. I found within the first two months, I didn't like residential as much as commercial. I left residential, full-time commercial real estate. Full-time commercial, okay. So you're saying experience a little bit of both of them. It's never gonna hurt. Okay. Because you don't know what you don't know. Okay. Well, speaking of Robert, let's go back a little bit tell the audience about your background. Um, when did you have that, that we call it a zero moment of truth to borrow something from our friends at Google, but when did you have that experience, that zero moment of truth, that real estate was your calling and that's where you needed to be? When did that happen to you? Well, actually it's kind of funny. So I'm in North Texas and I was going through an entrepreneurship degree, at least what I told my parents. And the first thing out of their mind was, wait a minute, 
entrepreneurship degree. This sounds like a 35 year old stay at home son. That's not gonna work. I mean, seriously, they're like, yeah, so we're gonna come to Dallas and we're gonna put you in an aptitude test over the weekend. And I'm yeah. like, what are you talking about? Okay, I agreed, because they were helping me pay for school. So I go in for the weekend. It was like seven hours on Friday, six hours on Saturday, and it's supposed to spit out based on your your math skills, your language skills, your verbal ability, your problem solving, everything. This is the path that would most fit your, your comfort zone. This is where you're gonna lean in most naturally. And it spit out 98% entrepreneurship. Wow. And they were like, okay. So do, through the international uh, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship program, they touched on real estate. I leaned into that. Then I got my real estate degree as opposed to, or instead of entrepreneurship. And I loved it. We had a fantastic professor up there and I dove head first. So I got my degree and then jumped right in. I loved it. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think I may have taken that test at some point. Did, <laughs> did you take one of those when you were in college? Where I took they, quite a few tests. Before <laughs> then, the high aptitude school? test? Or Trellis, did you ever you? take one of those tests where you, they, the idea is to figure <laughs> out what career path you yeah. should be on, right? Something like that? What I think I had to take mine. Fall back on. I think I had to take mine a couple of times. I don't think I passed <laughs> it the first time. Well, I did. But, I mean, it was it was a it was great. But I, you know, jumping into real estate, I had no idea, and I knew I I thought about commercial real estate. But back in two thousand four and five, they literally, like in the movie, said, "We don't know how to help you from right. a residential company standpoint." So yeah. Here is a desk and a phone. We wish you the best of luck. Right. Right. That so so that's just a, it, right? So colleges offer degrees in real estate. Yeah. But they really don't teach you sales. No. Right? So if you're not doing sales in real estate, then you're probably doing something along the lines of real estate development. Right? Perhaps? Or, I mean, because what, what do they teach you in college? What classes did you take? That were I mean, real estate? real estate finance, real estate 101. Yeah. They did dive into more so of what you should be doing to increase your net worth, your wealth in the future. This is how you should look at real estate. Okay. It's an investment vehicle. That was fantastic. Okay. Which led me into investment side of commercial real estate. So sort of the mechanics of yes, the business. Yes, but sales, right? no sales. Yeah. They so did touch on money, which most classes don't touch on. This is how you should handle uh, your money. Isn't that amazing? Kids these days graduate without knowing how to balance a checkbook. They can't do a, Wait, they can't a calculate check? a mortgage. Oh, I'm sorry. They, they don't have, have checks anymore. Checkbook? I forgot. Yeah. And they have a debit card, and as long as they have the card it's and it works, they know they have money. That's how they determine if they have money in their it account. Worked. Right? So, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, what gaps did you have to fill once you got out of college and really got into the commercial side? Where, was the, where were the biggest gaps that you had to make up? Um, I mean, learning the processes of the transaction because they didn't go through the process of a transaction. And then when problems wow. arose, how did I get what I needed to know in order to fix the problem? Okay. Because they, didn't, they just showed you in a perfect scenario, this is kind of a transaction. Hmm. even in the real estate schools, hmm. but the problem solving was on your own. Okay. And most of the time I didn't have a go-to person, which was a big problem, I thought. So um, later on, we can, we can talk about in a minute, where um, I knew every company needs a go-to person, a go-to group, because that's when you need it. It's like insurance. You don't need anything until you do. And so when problems arose, that was my biggest struggle, is figuring out if this happened in a transaction, how do I overcome it? How do I get to the closing table? Right. You just brought up something very interesting because by nature, entrepreneurs tend to be problem solvers, Yeah, you have right? To so if you're inclined to solve problems, so as you were going through this process, that kind of explains to me why you do what you do today. Yeah. And we can go ahead and jump ahead a little bit, let the cat out of the bag, but, oh. but tell us a little bit about this company that you started, um, learningcommercial.com, and, and why did you build it and what does it do for people? Oh, absolutely. Well. Um, it's been, I've been wanting to do this for years, right? So uh, inevitably, since we're all at home during this pandemic, it was a perfect time, captive audience, and I thought there's no better time, just get after it, get it done. So I bought the domain name, learncommercial.com, and I already had the material. So I put the material in Kajabi, which is a great teaching platform. And then I started you know, spending money on ad space and getting people's attention and getting people drawn into classes. Uh, we have two live classes, but the reason I started it was because if you're learning to, if you want to get into commercial real estate, there's not a lot of great resources out there. 
people talk about CCIM all the time. Fantastic education, but it really is like the PhD of real estate. You don't need to get a doctorate all the time. Right. Sometimes you just want to know, is this for me? Sure. Is this an avenue I would like to pursue without spending $10,000? Right. You want to stick your foot in the water. Yeah. This right. is an yeah. extremely affordable version of getting from A to Z, the introduction to commercial real estate, all the way through what the lending side looks like. And we have live calls, guest speakers, discounts, document library, a closed Facebook community. I mean, it's everyone should go check it out. It's, it's fantastic. LearnCommercial.com. Well, I mean, you, you've, you've filled a need here, right? Because I don't recall, you know, there was a point very early on in my career, I did a couple of commercial transactions, yeah. bought an office building and, and did some other stuff. But um, I didn't really know where to go to find out what I didn't know. And, and yeah. I certainly didn't know what I didn't know. And what you've done, though, is you've kind of given people a place to, to start, which, you know, aside from going and, and traditionally joining, you know, a big um, a commercial brokerage and starting yeah. it, a lot of people start in uh, tenant rep and leasing and that kind of thing. But your program is a little more comprehensive than that, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, we, we cover the introduction, tenant rep, landlord rep, investment sales. We cover all the asset classes, multifamily, retail, office, industrial, land development, repositioning. Yeah. Right. Okay. And, and we add to it all the time. I mean. So for a, for a career path, and this is another thing that a lot of um, folks that are looking at this commercial side of the business, yeah. there's different flavors of commercial. Oh, yeah. Talk about a little bit about what, what are the different areas of commercial that somebody could focus on? I mean, you could be a tenant representative just for retail, tenant rep for just industrial. Okay, hold on. That's a dead animal. Tenant for retail, <laughs> tenant rep. Okay. <laughs> what? Um, well, things just are, kidding. Things are still happening. And, yeah. you know. This pandemic has crushed a lot of sectors in commercial real estate, but with that being said, the silver lining is a lot of new opportunities and new businesses will emerge and will arise. For example, on the restaurant side, I mean, there's a good chance 50% of these restaurants will never reopen. How many? Probably 50%. 50. I've heard yeah. estimates as high as 30. 50 is possible though, yeah. huh? So wow. if that's the case, a lot of these other restaurant groups that have never had the opportunity to get class A prime oh, locations okay. now have the opportunity to actually be placed in a location that fits their needs. So you're, it's almost like social Darwinism, right? I, I mean, mean, you know, the survival of the fittest, that kind of thing. Well, it's and tough right now. I mean, you, you can't expect restaurants to make money at 50% occupancy. Listen, yeah. most of them don't make money at 100% it's occupancy. It's thin margins. <laughs> yeah. It's thin margins. I was it's in that it's business. tough out there. Believe me. Yeah. Thank God every day I'm not in the restaurant in business the, the, anymore. I love restaurant tours, but man, it's a tough way to make I think one of the most painful, if you're a commercial realtor and you're passionate about helping your clients. I think one of the most painful things you've had to witness is if you're putting tenants in from November of last year through March of this year. Oh my god. They're a brand new tenant. They just spent all their money on tenant improvement allowance and then COVID hits, they got to shut down. Landlords still got to pay the bill, so they're expecting yeah. rent to come in. That's tough. Yeah. And you know, I mean, honestly, my heart sincerely goes out to all pe people in that position. I mean, that is a that's a that can really take your life apart. Uh, there's because people put everything they have into Absolutely. their restaurant. It's just not, and you have to sign personally on this stuff, and a lot of people are not going to get out of it. Thank goodness they're, you know, it's not a, a, a there's no debtor prison or anything like that. But I mean, at the same time, it is a tremendous hill to climb once you, you know, get out of this. So our, yeah. our honestly, our thoughts and prayers are with anybody watching the show who's uh, in that uh, in that shape. But what you talked about though, it seems like with every tragedy there's a new opportunity and so yeah. you're talking about changing uses of commercial space um, what's talk about the big boxes what's going on with the malls and things like that now well there's several malls across the country already that uh, companies like Amazon have already looked at or taken not taken bought leased for uh, storage purposes mm -hmm. um, a lot of the JC Penney big boxes if they end up shutting down half their stores or I know they're gonna shut down some those size opportunities are great for industrial uses. Some of the malls have already been turned into many mixed use centers. Like I know, I can't remember what city it was in, but they created like 500 little residences within a mall. That's so a interesting They're getting really idea. creative. Yeah. Um, I mean, retail's not going away. It's still gonna be here. I know everyone says retail's dead, everything's gonna be e-commerce, but that can't happen. People need human interaction. I want to go to a restaurant. Once in a while, I don't like shopping, but I like to walk around and just see people. Right. Right. We can't all just go hide. We're it's social not, by nature. We can't yeah. do it. It's not going to happen. No question so. about it. Um, 
one of the other things I think that's interesting is some of these larger malls that have that have been hanging on by their the thread here. Yeah. You know, could be you know this could be the thing that does them in. And I think you had indicated that you know opportunities with with those types of projects are you know like you said creating multi-use venues that type of thing where you've got residential and, and office mix and yeah. and that sort of thing. So that's really interesting. Um, well, let's go back a little bit. I want to okay. kind of I like to, to sort of walk people through your career because I mean you're you've done very many impressive things. You, you know you do big deals. We we sat down at lunch and he goes, yeah, I just put an offer in on a seventy five million dollar apartment complex. Like no big deal. You know it's like okay, well that's that's a pretty big deal, right? Well, I always but, get excited, but I don't get excited yeah. until it's a done deal. Until it funds, right? Really too many yeah. moving parts. Right, yeah. right. But but walk has it always been a walk in the park for you? Have you ever had any struggles along the way, and you know, in, in business, or or have you just always been at the top of the class? Oh, of course. I mean, when I, like I said, when I first got started, I didn't have any mentorship, or I didn't know who to turn to. Um, I joined a boutique here in Dallas, actually, and I tried to start their commercial division. Um, I don't want to go into details who it was, but they bailed on me on a large deal that I needed the company backing. I was too small by myself. Uh-huh. I quit the next day, left, and I went over uh, to KW Commercial. Uh-huh. And I was there, and that was in 2007. So I had a fantastic first quarter. Did 3.2 million in volume my first quarter there, and then 2008 happened. And then 2008 happened. The lending money dried up. The inventory came on the market in floods. I mean, everyone remember it. 2008 was tough for everybody. Yeah. And so that was a really eye-opening of what could happen. That was my first massive downturn I ever seen in business or felt. Period. Right back in the '80s, I was too young. I don't remember. Yeah. But this is my first, so I had to slowly adapt, and out of that, I became a generalist because, out of necessity, if anybody sent me a lead, I had to grab it. Sure. Now, but, just it, it, it kind of uh, unpack what that means. What's a generalist? So, a lot of the big firms, when you start, uh, they want to pigeonhole you, so to speak. So they say you are an office sales only. So if you have a multifamily lead, you send it off to the multifamily division. If you're a tenant rep in the retail side, that your job is to do tenant rep only on the retail side. Um, that's fantastic because you know all the players in that arena. They say riches are in the niches. That is true sometimes. Um, and in that case, if you know all the retailers, when anything moves, you already know about it. That's fantastic. Mm-hmm. But back then in 2008, there wasn't enough product moving for me to be a specialist. I needed to make money for myself. So if any lead came along, retail leasing, office sale, land buy, it didn't matter. I was grabbing it, I was getting it closed. Okay. But what that did for me was it, by accident, made me learn all sectors of commercial real estate. He's an entrepreneur, remember, okay, yeah. right? This so I learned by a, default, Yeah. and then I failed forward through all of these processes, there you go. and now teaching to me is second nature, I love teaching and educating people about commercial real estate because I've been in the trenches. I'm in the trenches with them. I get it. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think, wouldn't you agree, C3, that most entrepreneurs have a heart of an educator? I mean, they really do. They like to be successful and then they like to, to give back and, and help other people. Let's, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I've got a little f- vibe going here with somebody in the audience. I know you're out there and I know what you're thinking. 75, what's the commission on a $75 million deal, right? I mean, that's a big, big number. But how often do you, do you get a check in commercial? What's it like managing your life when you may only close one or two big deals a year? Yeah. And whereas in residential, we're closing stuff every month. So what's it like for, and by the way, how long should somebody who gets into commercial expect to, that they need to survive before they can start earning enough to, to, li- yeah, to so live on. When I was training people, um, and when I still when I do now, I say if you're just starting out in real estate period, especially commercial, six months to one year runway financially. Okay. Which means you need to have that money in the bank to live on to draw down, yeah. right? That could be a partner or a parent or who, however you get the money. Sure. Yeah. Savings, Fred, it doesn't Uncle matter. Visa, Aunt MasterCard. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter, right? Well, I hope not. But <laughs> yeah. yes, because the quickest I've ever done a deal is 14 days. $1.4 million deal here in Dallas. I never met the client, never saw the property. He called me, I wrote a contract. It was amazing. I okay. was like, I love you. That doesn't happen all no. the time. No. Right. And then we had one that took 18 months and it fell out of contract twice. Okay. And everything in between. Right. So, yeah. I mean, for example, last year, I went through a six month period with no paychecks. Right. And then I had back to back months where it was over six figures. Okay. 
but that can happen very easily. And those two could have easily fallen out. So it's just, you have to have, in, in all sectors of real estate, you have to have a big enough pipeline. That's right. You can't, too many of the real real estate agents out there have the peaks and valleys because they don't lead generate properly. They don't have 30 people in their pipeline. They all have right. three. Now, now we're getting to the meat of the coconut here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> here it is, guys. What I just heard was most agents don't know how to lead generate properly. Let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about what proper lead generation is and how much time and, and how should an agent lead generate in your business? I mean, it's time on task over time. So it's the consistency of it. Consistency. Okay. Yeah. Consistency so is important. What else? We have a lead generation, one of our modules of lead gen. And I say, you need to go identify your top 10 areas you think that you can get leads from. Okay. Just go name 10. It could be a your family, your sphere, your uh, PTA, your school, wherever it is, doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, just randomly bumping into people at the grocery store, who cares? Top 10, okay. Out of those 10, give me your top three. These are the top three that every single day, non-negotiable, I have to reach out to. Okay, one of my favorite terms, non-negotiable. Non-negotiable, non -negotiable. Right. this is what I have to do every day. Yeah. I mean, every day it's educate, legion, follow-up, educate, legion, follow-up, period. Okay. That ladies and gentlemen, is true in any sales business, any commercial sales. real estate, Regardless residential real yeah. estate, mortgage, whatever you're gonna go into if you're on the sales side, consistency yeah. is key, right? Absolutely. Okay, so you build a pipeline. Yeah. And building a pipeline, all right, so now you're you're still a generalist, I guess, right? Or do you do you specialize <clears throat> in certain areas now? I lean like on investment in? sales. That is investment uh, sales. what I much prefer now. Um, unfortunately, I also like to help people who I don't think would get better help elsewhere. So that's kind of an Achilles, okay. not an Achilles heel, but I help a lot of people where I think I should be um, referring off to, to another agent because yeah. I love the investment sales and I also want to bring other people up and show them the ropes. So we're working on it. It's, yeah. yeah, I'm still a generalist. And, and that can be a problem for someone like you or me is we, we start to care more about somebody then they care about themselves almost. I mean, where, you know, we want them to do better and we have more confidence in them than they have in themselves. Well, that's always an obstacle of coaching yes. and training. Yes. You want to yes. pour into them. You want to see them succeed and 10X their life. And um, no matter what you're telling them, if they're failing to execute yeah. or they're not listening, then. Well, speak, speaking of coaching, who, who, have you had a coach in real estate? Uh, yeah, I've had several people who were um, either team leaders or brokers of operations I've sat down and talked to. And I did have a uh, commercial coach at one point. We, we had a, about a year and a half, two years. Okay. What, why, what gaps does that fill? Why is it important to have a coach? I mean, why does anybody need a coach? I mean, look at the professional athletes. Look at anyone who's overly successful and a master of their craft. It's not just them. It's someone else critiquing everything because practice doesn't make perfect. It's perfect practice makes perfect. Right. And so okay. too often we're doing things which we think are the right things to do, but if we just tweaked it a little bit, we could go 10x further with less effort. Yeah. 10x. Like a golf is, that, is that Cardone? Grant, Grant, Grant Cardone. Cardone? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know. We, we know a little bit of Grant. Um, I like Grant because he's in your face. Yeah. He's I've in your face. I've been listening to David Goggins yeah. a lot recently. He's yeah. in your Say, face. I love that book. He's look, yeah, you're lying to yourself. Book. Look yourself in the mirror yeah. and you tell yourself the truth. That's right. Yeah, Absolutely. we tell our, it's the Every reason day. why it's the shit story. That's, we were down with Jordan Belfort for a weekend yeah. and, and he, he, he comments about that a lot. What's the, uh, what's the best piece of advice that anybody who's mentored you has given you? I mean, it was probably that lead generation is the only thing that matters in our industry. Okay. That's it. That was a rider downer guys out you, there, right? I, and even now I tell people, if you are a master lead generator, you never have to do a deal ever. You refer them out, right? You're just the rainmaker. You just yeah. bring in the leads and you send mm. them out. Right. Okay. Yep. That's right. So leads, I always like to say this is, I'm going to copyright this, but leads are the currency of our business. Right? I mean, <clears throat> look at all y'all's favorite Zillow. Yeah. Oh, the beast. <laughs> well, the beast yeah. is now. A I hope you beast. guys aren't listening. I mean, we hate you. you. Know? Just, just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, no, no, no. Zillow's they great. They pump out leads and they blast them out. <laughs> yeah, for a that cost. was a. That's a. Yeah, that'll that'll go down in the annals. But um, you know, it's true though, and and because the reason why they're successful is because agents don't know lead conversion and lead generation. They they don't know those two. Well, if they do, they things. fail to do it on a consistent basis. Yeah. 
they, uh, for example, when I first got started, I didn't have any leads. I already exhausted my sphere, so I had to find where else do I go. Right. I joined these networking groups. I went to meetup.com and went to networking groups that had either real estate or like a BNI, uh, Business Network International, or something sure. like that. Yeah. And I went there. And it took me six months before I actually started seeing leads from that group. And I was That's there right. every Tuesday. Yeah. At 7.30 yeah, in the morning. Yeah, we did BNI. Were you in a group here uh, locally? or? Uh, no, I was in Austin for BNI, oh, Austin, but I tried yeah. NetWeavers, which was down in yeah, uptown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. NetWeavers, the CEO group. Yeah. That's, a, that's a good one, too. I mean, yeah. And that, by the way, that's another rider downer. If you guys are out there looking for ways to generate leads, uh, Business Networking International, BNI is a great one. NetWe any of these, even Toastmasters, places where you Absolutely. can go to get better and be more comfortable in front of people. Actually, Toastmasters, it's a, everyone brilliant. should try it brilliant. because I totally you need agree. to be able to yeah. take any topic and just articulate right or wrong, terribly or not, but be comfortable talking to people. Okay, so I got one for you. What's the best self-development book you've ever read? You know, there's so many great books. The one that resonated with that, I just like Grant Cardone's style. Okay. I like Grant Cardone, Gary Vee, those guys resonate. Brandon Bruchard, you like? Yes, Brandon yeah. Bruchard's yeah. great. Okay. Um, those all resonated really well with me because they're in your face. Because deep down, I think we all know, we all heard what we actually need to do, but we're just lying to ourselves that we're too busy, we're tired, it's the crappy we're sore. Story. It is, yeah. it's the same crap. So yeah. those, if you do them properly, they force you to get in your face and say, okay, let's look at the reality of how much time do I spend wasting during the day? Yeah. Where should I be? Where do I want to be? How am I going to get there? And too many people just they keep lying to themselves. They don't do the task necessary to get where they should be in life. Right. And that's across everything. Yeah, I totally. And, you know, here's the funny thing is when you go to to events like 10X or, you know, Brendan Bouchard has a session or Tony Robbins, yeah. you look around and the people that you see in there are there's people making way over a million dollars yeah. a year. And they, they're attracted to these people because they know the value. They know and they invest in personal development. And, and I like to ask, when I'm interviewing agents, I said last year, I'll ask them, how much did you invest in, in self and in personal development? Uh, right? I want to know. Probably about 25 grand. Yeah, so you, 25 grand, okay. I mean, yeah, we, that, we're easily spending that. And, and that's also including health. Because to me, that's important. And okay. Well, let's, okay, let's talk about health. What, what, um, I, I noticed you, you were commenting that your jacket's a little tight now. You've been, you've been <laughs> working out and stuff. What, yeah, uh, yeah. tell us about what you do to keep the life balance um, a little bit, Robert. What, I mean, uh, exercise, what other things do you do? Do you meditate? You know, I tried meditation and I, I continue to try. And I say I fail. I, I like to say I'm failing forward at meditation. It's difficult for me. Um, I think a lot of entrepreneurs, our minds are always racing. It's really, I have not <laughs> been ADD. able, I have yeah. not been able to calm yeah. my mind Where's my red to, go, oh, to, to go to a Zen yeah. place, right? So <laughs> right. I've tried, but uh, unless I have, unless I'm in front of someone who's dictating something to me to help me calm my mind down and get me in that place, I can't do it on my own. Or I have okay. not been able to do it on my own yet. You, you can't just do the hmm. No, I can't. Get at peace That's tough. Well, I, can't um, do I, do, I do enjoy reading. I listen to audiobooks. I don't read very often. Uh, but even when I go to the gym, I have a trainer. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. I don't need the trainer, but that pushes me so much harder. I work out so much more efficiently than I would otherwise. Right. Efficiency. And, and you know, it's, it's so interesting because lead generation is like going to the gym. Absolutely. You hate it on the way there, yeah. but you feel so good when it's done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? It's You're kind like, of one of those things. No, and that's no. self-discipline really, guys. It's yeah. all about leader, self-leadership and, and self-discipline. Well, that's interesting. What about this? What's, what's one of the craziest deals that you've ever been involved in. Can you share any stories with us about that without um, getting yourself in trouble? Well, <laughs> well, we've been attempted to be sued several times um, at no fault of our own, of course. Um, but sometimes deals go sideways and the reason I've seen most deals go sideways is because of timelines. There's a misconception of when timelines should occur and uh, people miss small details, Ooh, mainly okay. on things such as leases. Okay. Um, but like the law, we, we did a large deal a couple years back and it fell out of contract two or three times because there was no one willing to fund the deal. It came together the last week hmm. with the billionaire out of California to fund the deal. Interesting. Um, now who had to hunt that 
person down. Was that the the agent or no? That was the, the actual buyer. The principal or the buyer. The principal yeah. buyer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I All mean, right. as far as crazy transactions though, um, most of them just have small obstacles we have to overwork. Nothing gets too yeah. crazy. Um, but but isn't it true? I mean, what you just said about a timing in the lease, for example, yes. it's not the elephants that get you in this business. It's, it's the just, ants, right? It's the devils in the details. It, it's the details. Yeah. So, I mean, you've really got to know contracts very well. You've got to be well-versed, uh, and you've got to be a good negotiator, right? Absolutely. I mean, I mean one deal I did, um, it cost me 40000 hmm. At no fault of my own, but yet I have to take responsibility. Okay. Because a title company didn't fall through with their commitment, and then the seller refused to extend closing, and so we were in default. Right. And the only way back into the contract, they said, we need another $40,000. Right. And my buyer was in a 1031 exchange situation, so if we didn't close, they were suing everybody. Yeah. So it's they sue everybody and pay a million dollar tax liability, or I cough up 40 and just get it done. Every once in a while, you gotta take one for the team, I mean, right? It's, uh, I mean, it's, yeah. Well, it's. Sometimes a buck just stops with you. Right or wrong, doesn't matter. Yeah. Just life's going to go on. You can dwell on it. And you got to own. Just, you just got to own it, right? Yeah, just, just get over it and move on to the next deal. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. I want to speak just a minute here. And I, Did I tell you the time was going to go fast? And we're, we're fast approaching the end of our show here. But I want to, if you would, I want you to just take a minute, Robert, and, and uh, I want you to share some wisdom with our audience. And we have uh, people out in the audience watching the show right now who are contemplating uh, what to do. And some of them are in their young in their real estate careers and they just can't get traction. Uh, I'm sure that you, there are a few words that you could speak that would be very meaningful to them. Can you share some of those with us? As far as residential agents, commercial, or just an agent period? I would just say in general, because really if you take out the, the t I mean, what the commonality here is that we've talked about are mindset, lead generation, lead conversion. Let's talk about mindset for a minute. Um, an agent who is struggling and, and just really having a hard time finding you know, that thing to get them over the hump. Uh, maybe in their first year, maybe in their first year, just not quite getting it all together yet. What, what do you have well, for them? I mean, it happens a lot. I actually had coffee with a gentleman the other day who is brand new into real estate and he's trying to educate himself on commercial real estate as well. And you could tell he just had, he was a little bit down on himself that he, he wasn't progressing as fast as he wanted to. And um, even the leads he was getting, they were Zillow leads, by the way, from Zillow, and they weren't committing to him. So he thought he had activity and they wouldn't commit to him, they went with somebody else. And he was getting down on himself. And you know th that's why the, the task, time on task over time is so important in this business. This is a simple business, but it's not easy. I mean, right. there's a lot of agents out there and a lot of people have massive success. So what are they doing that's different than what you're doing? You need to follow people with success, right? Success leaves clues. Amen. Right? Yeah. And so it, it, stop trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, and then the last thing, don't, especially in the commercial real estate world, don't expense yourself to death. Too many agents get into the business and people say, this is how I got leads, but they're spending $10,000 a month on leads. Okay. This is the software I bought. This is the tools I bought. This is the camera you need. You know, you don't need that stuff. In the beginning, you need the relationship. Got it. Period. Okay. You go find the relationship, the rest will take care of itself. You just need to go get it in more relationships. Okay. It's a relationship. You game. can't spend yourself rich, right? It's a business, not a hobby. So treat it like a business. Absolutely. Right? Those types of things are are key to remember. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's very that's, helpful. I, you know, that's the same thing I would probably share. I think, you, you know, you, you nailed it, hit it on the head that you've really, and just being intentionally strategic. Well, I mean, you in, know, in commercial, you could be spending $5,000 a month before you know it. Yeah. And not only that, in our business, you can be busy and broke. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? That's I easy. mean, just because you're busy moving paper around doesn't mean you're making money. <laughs> So, you know, if you're out, if you're not prospecting 10 to 12 to 14 hours a week. Every day, educate, yeah, lead gen, yeah, follow up. That's it. Repetitive. And have a calendar and, and get some self-discipline. All right. Well, I wanted to leave a minute or two here because I know that you and C3 uh, wanted to talk a little bit about your golf games. <laughs> so I'll give you guys a couple of minutes uh, to, to talk about uh, golf here. Is that cool? Absolutely. H how's your game, Robert? Uh, it's, it's okay. It's improving. It... Um, 
It's all it's a constant improvement. There's no winning at golf, which is one of the things I like about it. You can't beat it. I like always like competition. I always love a challenge, and golf is an an ultimate challenge. It's a huge challenge. So I mean, you yeah. one day you can go out there and shoot the best round of your life. The next day, the worst round of your life. It's like I have no idea what just happened. <laughs> right. Well, you were telling us about what Yetta. Uh, the last time you guys played together, what was that shot? Uh, oh, just had a, a gnarly <laughs> shank. I think both of us were having a rough go around on the course, but. It was, I mean, any what? day on the golf course is a better day in the office, right? Well, there you uh, go. Now, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. say that, but I don't think that's true. In my world, when I have some of those big deals closed, that's a pretty damn good day. Hey, true, true. Fair enough. But, yeah, but the day on the golf course was odd, though, because we showed up in the parking lot. There's no one at the pro shop, no one in the parking lot, no one on the tee box. We walk up. You that's can't right. have golf carts. It's during COVID. Everything shut down. <clears throat> the, I mean, it was weird. It was, it was an a eerie, it was an eerie yeah. feeling Had on the golf marshal course. Had the at the first tee box. He's like, yeah, no water on the course, so good luck with you boys. No I rakes. Like, we had to you walk You can't take the bags. pin out. It was yeah. odd. It was, it, was, yeah. it was pretty strange. COVID golf. That is. Wow. Very interesting. Wow. All right. Well, let's wrap this up. We're going to make wrap it up here. Give us your prediction, Robert, for the commercial industry, commercial real estate industry with COVID. Give us the – give us the – just the – the executive summary of your uh, thoughts on where things are going to be in the next 12 months. Ugh. Okay. Industrial and multifamily are going to lead the charge. Okay. Office and hotel will be last. Okay. Lighter Office downer. will be somewhere in the middle. So I've seen reports, some JLL put a report out saying office will see a 10% or less impact. Some said 50%. I think it's going to be 20 to 25%. Okay. Uh, retail is going to take probably three years to get back, 100%. Okay. Same with hotels. Um, industrial is already rock and roll. We didn't, we haven't seen much of a dip, if anything, in the hotter markets. Uh, I was mentioning earlier that the craziest stat I saw was in commercial real estate across all sectors. Uh, Amazon made up 11% of all leasing activity, which Crazy. is astronomical. That's how huge. much space they're leasing right now. Yeah. Um, and then Tesla obviously is going gangbusters too. So uh, that's kind of the timelines. Um, it's going to be interesting to see. I still see, um, for an investor standpoint, it's still pretty risky to jump in these trophy assets right now because they're such a premium and it's unsure what the rates are going to be, able, where they're going to be in 12 months. Okay. That's the risk because you buy on cash flow. Right. So there's a lot of money waiting on the, on the sidelines right now, waiting for um, one more shoe to drop if it does. If it doesn't, hopefully it doesn't. Um, it's going to be an interesting 12 months, all I know. Right. Depending on a lot what of, the a lot of uncer- does. Yeah. Yes. Lots yeah, of stuff, election. right? A lot of uncertainty, but multifamily and industrial are hot. They're going to be hot. And there's going to be a lot of opportunity for people who've never had this opportunity before. All right. Real quick, before we sign off here, <laughs> what's going to be going on with CoStar? Uh, well, I can't really say because I don't know. But there, there's rumors they're, they're, they're going to make a, a large purchase of some kind. Of a beast. Yeah. In yeah. the near future. So... Uh, CoStar is the, you know, largest data source for us commercial realtors and um, fantastic data. We all need to use it, but they're they're. It's a different ball game in commercial guys different because it's not the MLS. It's not the realtors that own the data. It's a third party. Yeah. Okay, and that's why CoStar is, is is the game. It, they own the game and they are very expensive. Yeah. Uh, what fifteen hundred a month? It depends. If you're a solo uh, agent, it's fifteen hundred dollars a month for nationwide access. But yeah. for example. Like if you wanted to get it just for Dallas Fort Worth, you're probably four fifty five hundred a month. Bargain, huh? <laughs> for Texas, yeah. it's eleven hundred a month. Yeah, just Texas and yeah. the nationwide yeah. fifteen hundred. Yeah. But wow. but they have no competition. Just they bought LoopNet. They bought, they bought LoopNet. They bought Apartments.com, yeah. Lands of America. Yeah. Uh, they bought Ten X. Yeah. So yeah, they're, they just swallow everybody up. Yeah, I mean they're they're growing like crazy. They're stocking yeah. from two hundred to eight thirty in right. five years. And yeah. real quick, your team Seven S stands for what? Yeah, the Seven Streams Commercial Group. And okay. 7S is the average millionaire has seven streams of income. So That's it. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So if somebody out in our audience wanted to reach out to you, Robert, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, well, if you have commercial real estate needs or we can help you through a referral or point you in the right direction, uh, reach out to uh, Creamer at 7S.life, L-I-F-E. And if you actually want to investigate Learn Commercial, you can go to learncommercial.com or email me at info at learncommercial.com. Okay, Super. Man, this has been awesome. First commercial guest we've had on the show, and uh, I can see we've been missing a lot, man. This yeah. is really incredible. Yeah. 
Uh, thank you, man. You're a legend around here, and and with your expertise and and uh, you know your your uh, stature, and and uh, we're just very thankful for you to be here and 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 uh, share your value with our audience today. Well, I, I really here, appreciate you inviting me. It's been a pleasure hanging out this morning, and yeah, hopefully do it again soon, guys. We yeah. will. You oh. promise you'll be back. All right. Absolutely. Okay. Super. Travis. You there? Yes, okay, indeed. man. I'm telling you, we're going to be watching now. You said in seven games, right? Three to one the next one? That's it. Okay. I hope so. Here, man. I hope so. I'm how, how about the Cowboys? How are they going to do? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know if we got – do we have time yeah. for that one? That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> hey, that was a great comeback last week. <laughs> yeah, now the Rangers, we don't even have to talk about them. Right? I do want to give a quick shout-out, too. We have uh, Tammy Slay. She chimed in on the chat. Oh, Tammy, early. is she back from seeing her grandbaby? That's awesome. Yes, yeah. indeed. Yes, and Karen yeah. Edwards also. Karen, Karen Edwards, Hawkins Freeman. Also oh, wonderful. chimed in as well on the chat. Well, we, yeah, super. Well, we sure appreciate the uh, – well, those are some very good friends and, and uh, kind and loyal viewers that, uh, that chimed in. So uh, say hi to all those guys. Thank you, Travis. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's a wrap. We still have some time to get some golf in before the time change and the weather change. change. So get out there and knock it around. These boys will be out when you guys playing again. We're all playing in a tournament next month, right? Mm, I think Prosper name. Education Foundation yeah. will be out there raising money for the scholarship that we're going to give uh, to Prosper uh, High School. There's two of them now. We're going to give uh, $10,000 worth of scholarships to uh, between some, the two schools, Rock yeah, Hill and to Prosper the High. Hearts Hearts of a Champion scholarship for awesome. my son here, who played on the on the ch state championship golf team in 2011. Uh, he hits 11. the ball really far, yeah. by the way. He hits a, he's a monster <laughs> on yeah. the tee box, yeah, for sure. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Thank you, Travis. Thanks, everybody out in the audience. You guys are wonderful. We couldn't be here without you. You guys have a great rest of your week, and we will see you on Cliff's Notes next Thursday. All right, folks, tune in to Cliff's Notes every Thursday at 1 o'clock Central for the tips, tricks, and tactics to explode your business. I guarantee it! Woo!